I've said it once and I'll say it again. Box turtles are some of the best pet reptiles because of their fairly easy care requirements. With that being said though, mistakes do happen and when it does, sometimes your pet can pay the price. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the most common mistakes that box turtle owners make and how to avoid them. My name is Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing amazing. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite reptiles of them all, and that is the box turtle. For those of you who are new to the channel, I own a 25-year-old box turtle by the name of Franklin, who I've featured on this channel a couple of times. And if you are familiar with this channel, then you know that box turtles are one of my favorite reptiles to own, and I basically recommend them to everybody. Overall, box turtles have fairly easy care, and I actually made a care guide on box turtles a couple years ago. Um, if you guys wanna go check that out, I can try to like pin it or put it up here somewhere. In that care guide video, I also went over a lot of the mistakes that I made when I first got my box turtle Franklin. And so I wanted to make a more specific video on some common mistakes that I think are made when people buy box turtles. And one of the main reasons why I think a lot of these mistakes occur is because I think a lot of the times people mix up box turtles with tortoises, spe uh, specifically Russian tortoises. And I also made a video about the difference between box turtles and Russian tortoises. I'll try to put that video up there as well so that you guys can check that out if you're interested. But I think a lot of the problems that stem from you know, the box turtle care is just the fact that people mix them up with Russian tortoises because box turtles aren't your average aquatic turtle, right? They're turtles, but they look more tortoise-like because they don't have like the webbed feet or anything like that. So I think that's where a lot of the kind of confusion comes from in the care. And so a lot of the things that are gonna be on this list are gonna be based off that along with other factors as well. So without rambling on for too long like I usually do, let's just get straight into the list of common mistakes that box turtle keepers make. And that is not knowing what species of box turtle you have. Now, as I said before, a lot of times people will get box turtles and mistake them for tortoises. I am a culprit of that. But there are also certain species, there's different species of box turtles as well. And some of them have similar requirements, but there's also a couple of species of box turtles that have completely different requirements. So it's important to know exactly what kind of box turtle that you have. You're really in my ear, just like that. So box turtles are found in North America and they can also be found in Asia. So there you got your North American box turtles over here and you got your Asian box turtles over here. Now, these two groups have way different care requirements than each other. So that's why it's important to know if you have a North American box turtle or an Asian box turtle. When it comes to the North American box turtles, majority of the ones that you're gonna see in the pet trade are gonna have very similar care requirements. The three-toed box turtle, the ornate box turtle, the eastern box turtle, a lot of them have similar care requirements. But there's also some North American box turtles, such as the Mexican box turtle and the desert box turtle, can't even talk, the desert box turtle that have different care requirements. So it's really important to know what species of box turtle you have. Also with the Asian box turtle, I don't, I'm not really as well versed with Asian box turtles as I am with the North American box turtle, but I know there's quite a bit of different species and I'm not sure what the variation between their care requirements are. But in general, Asian box turtles uh, like it a lot hotter and a lot more humid than the North American box turtles do. And a lot of the time, not knowing the species of your box turtle isn't even your fault. Sometimes the breeder or the person that sold it to you 
might uh, mislabel them and they might not know what species of box turtle they're even selling um, because a lot of them are very similar in the way that they look. And so it's just important to try to do as much research as you can, question the person that you're buying them from, and if worse comes to worse, you can always go on Google and kind of search up pictures and, and look and compare. Um, I'll tell you guys that I didn't even know what kind of box turtle that I had for a long time. Like I told you guys before, I got my box turtle when I was about four or five years old. My parents didn't really know much about caring for reptiles at all. And so I didn't know what species of box turtle I had for a very long time. And it wasn't until I started really getting into the reptile hobby and doing my own research that I realized I had a three-toed box turtle, which now that I look back at it, I could have known a long time ago because that's one of the easiest box turtles to identify because they only got three toes. Okay, moving on to number four on the list is the box turtles diet. Now this is one of those situations where I think because the box turtle can sometimes get mistaken for a tortoise, that their diet can get somewhat messed up. Uh, it, this is a mistake, one of those mistakes that I made as well because I used to only feed my box turtle greens and fruit and vegetables. If you didn't know it already, box turtles are omnivores, which means they eat a mixture of plant and animal matter. And this is important because they need a varied diet in order to stay healthy. If they eat too much of one thing or if they only eat plant matter, if they only eat animal matter, uh, it could lead to problems down the road and in the future with their health and also could potentially lead to things such as shell deformities. Now, tortoises, such as the Russian tortoise, are fully vegetarian and they only eat plant matter. And because of the similarity in the way they look um, to people who are just starting out in the hobby, it's easy to mistake them and it would be easy to mix up their diet. Now, just giving your box turtle greens all the time, greens, fruits, and vegetables, while it's not gonna kill them, it's not the healthiest thing for them to only feed them that. They need a varied diet, that's what they eat out in the wild. So you wanna give them a mixture of fish, and chicken, and even dog food you can give them if it's high quality dog food um, because their diet is so varied. Even though it might not be the end of the world if you only feed them plant matter or if you only feed them animal matter, um, to get your box turtle the healthiest it can be, you wanna have a good mix of the two. Moving on to number three of some of the common mistakes that box turtle owners make is the turtle's enclosure size. Part of the appeal to owning a box turtle is the fact that they are so small. And a lot of people get box turtles thinking that because they stay relatively small, that they don't need to have a big enclosure for them. But that is actually not true. Box turtles are naturally nomads. They like to wander around and forage for food. They don't really stay in one place for too long and they need a lot of space to move around. This is another one of those mistakes that I explained in my care guide video that I made as well. I used to keep Franklin, my box turtle, in a 20 gallon long enclosure. And let me tell you, looking back at it now, I feel so bad about it. You wanna make sure that you're giving your turtle enough space to move around, to stretch its legs, to explore, give them a lot of enrichment and, and keep them entertained because they like to move around and they like to experience new things. Just for reference, I used to have Franklin in a 20 gallon terrarium. Now I have him in a 55 gallon Rubbermaid tub. So big, big difference between the two. Um, and I explained all that in that care guide video as well, but I wanted to kind of go over it again in this video because I think that's really important. And I think that's a really common mistake that people make because box turtles are so small that they think they can keep them in smaller enclosures. But in reality, they need actually a larger enclosure than most reptiles of that size, if that makes any sense. Coming in at number two on the list is lack of UVB. Again, I explained this one in that care guide video as well, but UVB is essential for a healthy box turtle. Without the proper UVB lighting, your turtle can develop things such as metabolic bone disease or deformities in their shell, and those are both things that you do not want to happen. Forgetting about UVB lighting is something that I think is one of the most common mistakes that reptile 
keepers across the board forget about because it seems like something that is such a non-issue like to us because it's just lighting, right? But for reptiles and turtles and tortoises, it's essential for them to grow and to grow properly. For a long time, Franklin didn't have a UVB light over his enclosure and it did have an effect on his shell, which I talk about in that care guide video. And um, after I learned about UVB lighting and the importance of it, and by the time I got UVB lights over his enclosure, um, the damage to his shell was already done. Now, luckily for me, it was nothing major. Um, there's no major deformities. The shell actually looks, like as a whole, it looks good. Um, but there was just little things here and there, little damage here and there, um, that the shell could have looked a lot better if I would have known, had I would have known um, about the UVB lighting before. And honestly, the best thing to do for your turtle, or any reptile that is, is to give them that natural light and to keep them outside if you can. If you live in a climate that permits it, then keep them outside. Or even if you can only keep them outside in the summer or for a couple months a year, anything helps. And there's nothing better than that natural sunlight. No matter how many UVB bowls you put in the enclosure, they can't mimic the the sun to its full extent so that's always the best option but if you can't just make sure you keep that uvb um, on your animals and last but certainly not least on the list of common mistakes that box turtle owners make is water this is another one of those mistakes that i think occurs because of the mix-ups between box turtles and tortoises uh, box turtles live in areas of the world where it's very humid they live near bodies of water and and water is basically like their lifeblood like they need it um, tortoises on the other hand the majority of tortoises they live in more arid dry places they don't really live in areas where there's a lot of water they don't have high humidity requirements when you own them as a pet um, but i think because of that mix-up um, a lot of times people will treat their box turtle as if it were a tortoise and again that's one of the mistakes, unfortunately, that I made as well. Um, I went a long time without spraying Franklin down and getting that humidity up in his enclosure. And that, along with the UVB lighting, also had an effect on his shell. He had little chips on his shell because he just wasn't getting that moisture. If you give a box turtle a bowl of water that they can fit in and that they can soak in, I guarantee you 1,000% of the time, they are going to use it. And the reason why I put it at number one on the list and why I think it's so important is because it is very, very easy for your box turtle to get dehydrated. And if they get dehydrated, they can die really fast. Dehydration is probably one of the most common ways that you can kill your box turtle or any reptile for that matter. So make sure that you're keeping that humidity up for them and make sure that you're giving them fresh water that they can soak in. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you found it informational and I hope that you enjoyed it. Look, mistakes happen. And if you've done one of these things that was on this list today, it's not the end of the world. All you gotta do is learn from it and you fix it. Owning reptiles, owning pets in general is a constant learning experience. And it's just important that you just take that knowledge and you build on it. And if you make mistakes, you just don't make that mistake again and you move forward. As I told you guys throughout this video, I made, I think basically all these mistakes that I listed on here and I'm the better for it because I learn from it and I take that knowledge and I apply it to my other animals and nobody's perfect. So don't beat yourself up if, you're, if you've made mistakes. Um, it happens. So with that being said, drop some comments down below. Let me know if you thought that this video was informational. Let me know if you made any of these mistakes that I listed in this video today. And give me some ideas for future videos that you want me to make. Make sure you guys like this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And please, please, please share this video. Until next time, everybody. My name is Pierce Lavalley. Anzu's, Anzu's flying around somewhere else. We are in Pierce's planet, and remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace.